G'day, welcome back to the Forty Channel. So the next few episodes, we're going to be doing a full knuckle rebuild. So we're going to strip everything down, including all our brakes, wheel cylinders, remove all the bearings, seals, the whole lot, clean it all out, inspect it all, put all new gear back into it thanks to online auto parts, uh, clean it all up thanks to chem tools, and hopefully it'll be good as new. As you can see, this one here spins pretty freely. You can hear a little bit of a grinding and rubbing in there. There's no movement. These actually feel pretty good, but that's not going to stop us from stripping it down and putting new gear in it. Have a look at the other tyre, and there's a few more issues going on with that one. But when it comes to the driver's side, it takes a fair bit of force to try to turn it. So something's going on inside here. I don't know if it's just the brakes that have locked on and held tight, which is more than likely. But again, everything over here, steering, everything feels quite good. There's no real slop movement or anything like that, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna be stripping it all down and replacing the lot anyway. All right, now let's get into it and see what we can find. Right now, if you look back on my past videos for the FJ40 build, We've done this before, but there is a few differences. The FJ40 had a few other little differences. One, 1977, but the front axle had been modified with some 60 series disc brakes and a few other little bits and pieces. So this one, 1965, drum brakes, and I won't be surprised if we find a few other little differences when we strip it all down. Anyway, let's get into it. First thing I'm gonna do is just give everything a bit of a spray down with some R1, Now this is a uh, multi-purpose penetrating oil, so it's, it's pretty awesome. You've seen me use the R10 on everything that's rusted and really bound up. None of these nuts and bolts and fasteners on the uh, front here look like they're rusted or bound up, thank goodness. So I'll just give it a quick hit with R1, let it penetrate in, hopefully that'll make disassembly so much easier. Bitten by one of them. There's a few spiders and redbacks caught up in here, be so before I start putting my hands all in there, believe it or not, you are one. Just give them a hit with that, and they won't bother you anymore. Right, I've ripped the tie rod off. Now you've got a little board joint here to make life so much easier to get these off. Online auto parts also sell all sorts of bits and pieces for uh, working on your vehicles. So, ball joint separator removal tool. This will make life heaps easier. There is more brutal ways of getting them off, which you've probably seen me do before. But this doesn't get any easier. Right, nice little trick. Just screw the nut on, just so it's uh, just on a few threads. That way, it'll stop the tool from slipping out and stop damaging any of the threads on top. It'll also stop this from flying down and crashing into the ground. Just take the nut off, take the tie rod off. Here we just got these Phillips head retainer bolts. Move them. Dead blow hammer. When I've soaked these with R1, 
I'm going to rip off the whole freewheeling hub now, make sure it's in free. And you can see it's not going to slip straight off. We've got a retainer pin here, so we just get the tool, pop that off, and we'll be able to slide the whole lot off. Righto, from this point on, might be a wise idea to put gloves on. Because as we get deeper into this knuckle rebuild, should be full of grease and hopefully not oil. Right, a split pin removal tool. This thing is sensational. I bought it for the last time and it doesn't get any easier than removing that pin than that. Should we have to slide all that straight off now? now let's just give that a quick clean out. Just give it a wipe over so we can find out where. There we go. We've just got a locking nut on here. Now it's now there's no movement in my bearings whatsoever. So it's in really good condition. But it doesn't stop me replacing everything for new because being such an old vehicle and not knowing the history of it, I have no idea when it was done last. I have no idea of the condition until we pull it apart. So we'll just bend these locking tabs back. If you're gonna use a screwdriver, make sure it's a screwdriver with the shaft all the way through with the hard end to the end. That way you're not going to shatter your screwdriver. Now, all my tools come from Toolking. So everything you see me use, I buy from Toolking. You've heard me mention them a bit, and they've been excellent. Really looked after me, or well, even before I started building 40 series Land Cruisers. So I've just dropped my GoPro and I've just smashed the rear screen. Luckily, we can still film and it's not the front screen, so that really sucks. Right, so I'd say this GoPro is no longer waterproof. Very disappointing. Anyway, let's carry on with the build. See this nut has been uh, well and truly flogged on before. They haven't used the correct tool and they've just flogged it on with um, a pin punch or something like that. But uh, the new kit comes with new ones of them. Okay, this locking tab has also been quite damaged. The good thing about that is means that it has been replaced at some stage before, so. That retaining nut looks okay, but we've got all new ones. Pull that off. There's another retainer ring. Okay, right now we can take uh, these bolts off and we can take all the brake system off. And continue to remove bits and pieces. Twelve mil. Got a gasket there. Just give it some love taps. Right, I will deal with all that assembly later. Right, and I was pretty much expecting to find this. I've never worked on one like this before and I've only ever seen it in uh, spare parts and I actually used some pieces to make a coffee table, so. Right, so we don't have a normal CV joint in here. What we've got, this is pretty cool. It's like a bore joint. So, so that bore sits in there and that gives you your movement 
side to side. So it's pretty different to what I'm used to and what most people have seen. Normally you've got your, um, your CV joint which is basically a big giant bearing and it all rolls around each other. But that's pretty cool. Just inspecting it all. There's no wear. No real crazy groove marks which is a good thing. So we'll clean all this up, we'll give everything a really good inspection. In the meantime, we'll keep pulling everything else apart. Yeah, so for the reason for that, 1965. It's the old style of doing it. And you don't see these much anymore. So these got superseded by the uh, constant velocity bearing style um, drive lines. So this is pretty cool. I, I'm pretty cool to see this something different all right we'll keep pulling it all apart and then we'll start cleaning up bits and pieces so before I had the whole leverage of the tire on here um, and it made it quite it was quite easy to turn now it feels quite notchy and stiff so there's something not quite right there Seven eight. Right, what we've got up here is some cone washers. I'm just going to get a uh, pin punch. It's going to hit around that cone washer. That'll sort of release it, pop it up. Then we'll be able to pull them out. Now we've got some shims on here. Well, we've only got one shim on the top, which is quite a thin one. Double check that actually. Nope, we do. Oh, we've got a number of them. All right, so carefully remove your shims. We've got three shims on the top. Three shims on the top of mine. These are genuine Toyota ones. They're undamaged, they're in excellent condition. Normally what you'd use is a centering knuckle tool. Um, pretty cool looking tool. I've never actually seen one. I was keen to try to get one to make one and give it a go. Uh, if I can get one before I have to rebuild it all, we'll use it. Otherwise what we'll do is we'll put it all back together using the exact amount of shims that they've used previously and we'll test it all and see how it all feels and fits. We want to make sure that we keep all these shims labelled and in a bag so I know that this is Passenger side top, passenger side bottom, etc. etc. It's very important that we keep these shims all together so we can put it all back together exactly the same way. When you're pulling off the top and bottom, I gave it all a bit of a shock with a dead blow hammer first, and then just very carefully just pry it off with a screwdriver, a few taps with a dead blow hammer. These are all machine surfaces, and the last thing you want to do is do any damage or burring on them. If you do happen to, it's not the end of the world. You'll just have to really give it a really good polish up and clean up so there's no burrs or, or scuffs on it that's going to throw your alignment out. Right, now all we're going to do now is remove the backing plates and the whole thing will come off. We'll be able to clean it all up, inspect it all, do the same to the other side. Now if you can't turn the torque down on your um, little battery gun, I would suggest just using hand tools. You don't want to damage any of these threads or anything like that. Pull that off at the back. Lift that straight off. Pull those bearings out. All we're going to do now is knock out the outer races. Just have a pin punch. 
there's a little indent that will fit perfectly with your pin punch you can just knock it straight out and it'll come out perfectly just hit it there and there just work side to side just take your time a few taps either side and it'll drop straight out same for the top All the bits and pieces off you can see rubber goes on first then our metal and our felt they're all getting tossed away and putting new ones on just give it a bit of a clean out now there wasn't much grease in here or not as much as i would have liked to have seen anyway but we'll certainly change that the good thing is i don't see any oil in here which means the rear seal hasn't been damaged, but what we can do is pull out so again you can see the setup where that bore sits inside it so our bore sits there and that is how we get our movement pretty cool design really Right, another difference to this one is we don't have our, our normal rubber seal or oil seal. What we do have is like a brass labyrinth seal that would have sealed it off and trapped off any grease and oil moving from one section to the other. Again, in really, really good condition. It looks like a lot of this stuff has only been replaced not long ago. And there's a human hair. <laughs> How bizarre. Yeah. Right, so exactly the same process. We stripped it all down, taken the top off, got the comb washers out, they were fairly easy. The bottom comb washers came out. We can't get that top, that bottom one off. It's not an issue because all you gotta do is lift up, slip it off, and you can actually leave that bottom one on while you remove it. Now what we need to do is tap it out from the inside and it'll pop straight off. Now what's happened here is that this bearing on the bottom has collapsed. So this bottom bearing has collapsed and it's jammed between these two housings and that's why we can't get this off. So a little bit of tapping, drop that out, that bearing can get tossed away. Even though it felt alright, it didn't feel like there was any slop, it always pays to pull it all out and remove it. Right, so the top bearing, some significant wear in it. It's really chewed out the inside of the bearing here and it's really pitted it. So it just goes to show no matter how much it feels okay, when you start pulling it down and getting right into it, it's definitely not. Well, right, we'll chuck all this side in the parts cleaner and give it a bit of new life as well. Right, let's take this in and go remove that bearing. All right, let's smash out this collapsed bearing. So get a decent sized drift, sit right on top, see if we tap it out. Shims. So you probably can't see it because it's fully covered in grease, but that bearing is totally just collapsed in on itself. So it doesn't even spin. When I punch out the wheel bearings, there's a seal on the back there. We're just going to hit the whole, hit the whole bearing out. It'll knock the seal out all in one go. We're replacing the lot anyway, so done. Right, so there's a seal. There's a bearing. Now punch out the outer race. Scoop out all that grease. Get it out of the way. You can actually see. Again, you'll see two little grooves that you can fit your pin punch in to be able to knock out those bearing races. Again, just tap a little bit either side and work it out.
Right, now we've just stripped down the entire knuckle on the front of the FJ here. The next step is everything's pretty dirty, it's pretty greased up. It's got so we've got dirt, grease, sand, oil, the whole lot on here. They need a really, really good cleanup. All the components, plus all the tools, are going to need a great cleanup too. That's where chem tools part cleaner is really going to come into its own so we're going to clean all this stuff up throw it in the parts cleaner we're going to use a parts washer solvent from chem tools we're going to clean all this up bring it up like new Charlie's actually got involved in helping with the cruiser. Good job. Yeah, it's like a fun. Just clean all the gaskets off. Make sure you got it all off. All right, so we've got our oil retainer here. This has just got like a felt seal in it. Pull that out. And we'll be able to replace that with a new one. In the meantime, we'll just give this a really good clean up. Hit it with the wire wheel and throw it in the parts washer. Just cleaning down with some wax and grease remover. Clean all the parts and we want to tape off all the machine surfaces because we don't want to get any paint on any of the machine surfaces and then it'll look pretty much then it'll come up pretty much like new right hey, so that's it we've had a big day we've stripped both knuckles off we've stripped all the bearings out some of them were totally cactus, totally destroyed. Uh, all the seals, gaskets, we've just spent a whole day just cleaning it all in the parts cleaner. Uh, it's been massive. So Ali has come down, she's helped me out. She's actually cleaning up the uh, FJ40 for me, doing a pretty good job there. Uh, Charlie May came down, she did a quick clean up in the um, parts cleaner. It's pretty much the first time she's ever popped up in a video, isn't it? Yeah. She likes to stay away normally. And uh, unfortunately, I dropped my GoPro and smash me gopro so that's a bit sad but anyway that's pretty much it so so next episode hopefully we can get all the knuckles new bearings new gaskets new seals get all that back on then we'll rebuild all the brakes put all new wheel cylinders all new front brakes on it and the front end will be totally done which will be really exciting won't it alia yep tiny little bit closer maybe like two percent closer to finishing then we'll move on to the rear end and do the same thing. Your new brakes, new wheel cylinders, all that type of stuff in the rear end. Check all the bearings and seals on that end as well. And then hopefully we'll be back to a proper rolling chassis that is ready to go and then we can start building up from there. So a few more things to happen, heaps going on. Right now, so that's pretty much it for this episode. Feel free to give a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the bell and subscribe if you want to keep up with what's going on with the FJ45 fire truck. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.